Hello fellow history fans and welcome back to this week's video and today we'll be looking at the strange place of Camp Century. The Cold War was known for its frozen relationship between the East and West, but Camp Century took this to another level, based in the not so warm Greenland. However, the camp was a ruse for something a little more scary, and if it was discovered at the time, it could have made the Cold War a whole lot hotter. Camp Century ran between 1960 and 1966 on the Greenland ice sheet and was based around 150 miles from the then established fuel airbase. The camp was intended to test the feasibility of running a military base in Arctic conditions, as well as being used to carry out varying scientific experiments. Interestingly, the base was powered by the world's first portable nuclear reactor. Camp Century uniquely consisted of several trenches dug into the ice and covered by prefabricated arch roofs, which needless to say wasn't a standard thing to do. It might sound like I'm kind of rushing through the description of Century, but the camp itself isn't the most interesting part of the story. It actually was a big cover up for a secret nuclear weapon silo named Project Iceworm. And due to the time period, you might be able to consider it as the USA's own version of the Soviet Union arming Cuba with nuclear weapons. And we all know how well that went. Now this sneaky project was intended to have nuclear weapons on the base, with tunnels under the ice covering a whopping 4,000 kilometers, which is the reason for the odd trenches under the ice. Unsurprisingly, this didn't happen, but we will explain the reasons why later. At a depth of 8 metres, the base's tunnels only ended up covering a distance of 3 kilometres. Even still, the excavations boasted a hospital, a shop, a theatre and even a church. All of which were at the use of the 200 man strong team based at the camp. Water was supplied by means of melting ice, which was quite obviously in abundance in the area. However, the water had to be tested for such lovely things as plagues and deadly bacteria. It wasn't all clandestine James Bond villain-esque secrecy though, as the project was hidden in plain sight by publicising Camp Century, even inviting the press to visit the base and its groundbreaking nuclear reactor. Cheekily, the US didn't actually tell the Danish government about what Camp Century was actually there for. And to be honest, there was little reason to question the USA's intentions as the scientists based there did indeed drill for ice core samples. Without the actual nuclear weapons there, it would have been hard to see what the excavation works would eventually be used for. Interestingly, the first ice cores to study climate change came from the project. As the early 1960s progressed, the USA planned to evolve the project to have around 600 nuclear missiles aimed at the USSR hidden beneath the ice. The report set out in 1960 called Strategic Value of the Greenland Ice Cap set out a plan to fully implement a launch site covering 130,000 kilometers squared, with new tunnels and missile silos being dug out every year. The missiles planned to be used on the site were a modified version of the Minuteman ICBM and would be nicknamed, rather aptly, the Iceman. The Iceman cometh. Even though the plans were ambitious, the project would be abandoned fully in 1966, and it was Mother Nature's way of letting us know that she didn't like the way we had been treating the planet. In the short six year lifespan, the engineers tasked with digging the project discovered that the glacier was actually in a constant state of movement, and all the hard work would be lost within two years, which kind of sucks. It's hard to see if you look at a picture of Greenland's ice that it has elastic properties. In 1962, the roof of the reactor room had partially collapsed, and because of this, the reactor was switched off in July 1963, never to be switched back on again. A diesel replacement was used, as the camp could only be operated during the summer between 64 and 66, when it was deemed unfeasible to continue with the excavation works, as they would essentially be taking one step forward and two steps back. Even though the concept was proven not to work, Camp Century and the Project Iceworm still have a legacy to this day. When the camp was abandoned, much of its nuclear and biological waste were left behind, in the thinking that the snowfall would keep it in an icy, protected condition. As well, in the 1960s, they didn't think that global warming was really a thing. If the rate of ice sheet melting continues, we will begin to see the full extent of the waste left behind within 100 years, which is a bit worrying for the local ecosystem. The legacy of the base isn't all doom and gloom, however, 
as the discovery of the melting ice and the movement of the ice sheet was a direct result of the scientific observations made during the camp's lifespan. Now, Camp Century was an ambitious project and the scale of the proposed project is something that only could have been approved during a time like the Cold War. It's impressive to think that a base three times the size of Denmark could have housed the end of the world. Hello fellow history fans, thanks for watching this week's video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as I enjoyed making it. New videos are uploaded every Thursday and it'll be great if you would subscribe. All the usual links are in the description below as always. And thank you so much to my Patreons. I couldn't be doing it without you guys. And as always, thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.